All right, guys, I'm Mike the Worker. Today we're going to try to fix the steam pipe so we can get a second uh, radiator in. Basically, we're trying to get another T in here, go up to the radiator. That's the goal. <clears throat> One thing I wanted to tell you about is when you use pipes, beddings, use water. American made. Threads are always good. So today, basically, we're gonna to try to put a, another radiator up. So we're in the main line, it's a two inch main line. Basically feeds to this boiler, which I just got done doing the upper uh, headers. Try to reduce the amount of um, condensation gets in the system. But the plumbers basically connected two radiators to one pipe. So we're going to fix that. Each radiator should have its own individual pipe. Unless you're talking skyscrapers and stuff, but there's specific methods you have to follow with uh, a single pipe riser going into a radiator. So we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to put another T there, drill hole, radiator right above the floor. We're going to get that connected. Two pipe wrenches on this thing. One is a 36 inch, the other one I think. 18 inch or something it does the job. look good. Been running for a couple years. Not much rust in there. That's good. Always get a sniff test because you never know. So now we're gonna take the other side off here. Get my dissuader up there. And I'm gonna have to move that fitting. That's why I have a counter wrench on there. It's awesome doing these jobs with one person. But we got it. Coming out pretty easy. And there's the other side. Now what I'm going to try to do is uh, mock this thing up, my tee up there. We're just mocking out right now. Trying to clean this all out real nice and dope it up. Let me get close to putting it together. Quite a bit of thread engagement there. So now let's see how far my my T sticks out. And I try to have the things all with the same lettering. I like Ward, made in the USA. Good pipe fitting. The threads are always true. I'm just gonna put a little angle up there. I'm gonna try to mimic the angle they have on the existing. T. Over there, I don't have to worry about slow pitch and all that good stuff because the other radiators work great. Five on that but as far as mock-up we're going pretty good let's put a close nipple on this one and we're going to do a coupler because we want to take apart all this pipe just do what we're doing here so we'll throw a coupler in there that makes life easy put the coupler on so when I tighten it up 
I'm going this way with a wrench set against the wall. Man, got a bit there. That's what happens. Yep, got a little bit. Watch out, they got some bangs on them sometimes. See how much thread engagement I have on this one. That one might work. Get that corner in there now. Looks like it's gonna fight me. Of course, everything is nice and tight. So here's what our mock-up looks like. We didn't engage the threads there all the way, um, but it looks good. That's why I put a 45 in. We got enough pipe here and enough pipe on this side that we could probably stretch it. Might have to move the bracings. We gotta be careful because we have some other connections over here to radiator, so we won't be able to move that. But I think we can make this work for ourselves. Um, might go with a little bit of bigger nipple there because I have a lot of thread to chew up here. Some engagement. So, meanwhile, we'll look for a 45. That'd be sweet if we have one. Until then. And once I get my pipe in there, hand tighten it most of the way make sure I get my thread engagement hand tightened up in there so I'm going to put one wrench here so I don't lose my um, my settings to the other radiator I'm going to take this pipe tighten it up and light pressure on there. I should have this on the other side. You see that quick move? I learned that in keto. switch pipes here. So I'm going to have the bigger one riding the torque. Hopefully that will fit over that. It's a smaller wrench. Let's see if we can do two inches, baby. There we go. I like you already. too much pressure on this thing because you'll turn the pipe flat. That's good. Nice and snug. Get some dope on this side. We'll be tightening it like this. So we have to run our thread like this. Oh, that ain't good. Day in the life of Mike the Worker. You have to be able to adapt because your environment is ever changing. There we go. There's one. There's two. And there's three. I like to go a little bit extra, almost four. Get a nice stretch on there. Make sure everything's smooth. Then we're gonna put our T on. Then 
so it fits with the vertical pipe. And I don't know if I want to go one more time around. Let's just do it for fun. Get this thing nice and tight. Make sure I'm not messing up my settings. My existing radiator. Okay. Watching that. Weird so it doesn't move. I think I want to be right about there. And what I'll do is just lock up my other fitting. See where we fall. Looks about it. Continue with our insulation. So I'm going to put the union on. We want to make sure that when it tightens, we're pulling on it this way. I don't like pulling, pushing towards the ceiling. So what we'll do is we put our connection in for that. Just verify the setup. She's going to tighten up, which is good. I lost my fitting. That's never a good thing. Just continuing with our, our putting tape on. Proper seal. Uh, you can tell I'm an expert at this. We'll get it done. But we're working on our own house, so do it the right way. Right, now we're going to put the other side the flange on to this union. Oh no, the way's home. That's scary. Fittings nice and tight.
get a little bit tight. Make sure we don't have any leaks. Eight leaks. So when we run this, we'll make sure that we run it, you know, about a month or so with no insulation on it, just to see if there's any leaks. We don't want any leaks. So we're gonna put our final piece on. We just got back from the vise, just kind of tighten this up. So, let's get in there. First thing you want to remember, put on your flange nut. So we're going to put some pressure on this pipe. First thing we got to do is clean out that, that thread. I don't like the way that looks. Get rid of some of the old tape. Lean into it. Put this pipe in here until she starts rotating. Catches. There we go. All right. So we'll swing this flange over there. Get our pipe wrench in there. Of course, we got that in the other room. Wasn't in the other room, anyways. Oh, that's what happens. It is right here all the time. That was questions your sanity right there. This is going to turn out nice. It's just a matter of just cranking on it a little bit. I think that's about as tight as I want it. See what we have so far. So this is the end result. Flange looks like it lined up pretty good. Got good even spacing. So main line is basically done. We have to dope that nipple in that 45. 45. Okay, so basically we're gonna cut this off because if we rotate that, it's gonna hit the floor. So when they originally installed it, um, they must have swung it with this T on there. So what I'm using is just an automotive demo tool, demo blade.
and just put a plug in here. Instead of feeding two radiators, we'll just feed the one upstairs. It'll still look good. Won't clean anything up. There's the floor and everything. You notice I put a piece of plywood on the floor because we're trying to save this this wood. This house is 1884 is built. So obviously the floor is over 100 years old and it's really dense. Nice solid maple, so tongue and groove. So we're gonna save that. That's it for up here. Just gonna finish up here. We're gonna put this plug in. I like using this type of wrench. So I don't get any marks on the squares. So over there it looks nice after you paint it. This is going to be exposed. Funny thing about the pipes back in the day, people loved to expose them. That meant you had money and you show off that your house has steam heat versus wood burning stove. Nowadays people try to hide the pipes. This is a brand new steam system. Um, but I chose to expose the pipes because I want to be a bit traditional, a little bit of a purist. So, expose them. I think mechanically it looks nice. And we'll trim that off later so it looks a little bit better. And so we're back on the first floor. What I want to do is just lay out where I need to cut this hole. Um, make sure we're about even, like seven and an eighth. Just use a long straight edge. Right between seven and an eighth and seven and a quarter, that looks good. So I'm just gonna mark one line there, like that, and hop over to the other side. Over there, I'm kind of even with the wall. Maybe three and a half inches there, three and a half inches there. So it's against the outer walls of the pipe. And then I know that when we go this way, it's seven and a half inches downstairs, center to center. So get that approximately center to center. And right about there is where I want to cut my hole. So there's my center, which I just erased. there is my center and I'll cut a one and a half inch hole um, to this one and a quarter inch pipe so I give me a little bit of lead way and you can see lines up pretty good with the floor and lines up with the wall stay in between these lines and I'm good
One trick I like to do is put a pipe with a coupler in the hole so that the way there when I measure my pipe in the basement, I can see where the pipe's got to go. Minus my, my takeout or my thread engagement. Um, that just helps, you know, eliminate some of the guesswork. So now you can see the, uh, the pipe that I put through with the coupler from the top. And now I can line this up to see what distance I need to make, make this pipe to connect into that. Um, so it helps, helps out a little bit, work smart, right? Not hard. I'm gonna have to swing this over a little bit. It's gonna hit the brick, it looks like. Maybe clear it by a little bit, which would be good. If not, I can just rotate this a little bit that way. So, not a problem. So now we're just cutting this pipe to length. Um, so it was nine and a quarter face to face. And now we added some room for th length engagement or thread engagement. So we added all the way up to 10 and 3 eighths. Count for thread engagement both sides. When I take this around, I'm just so she comes off like that. So does a good job. A little hard on the tools, but um, yeah, it looks good. Then we're gonna thread this piece of pipe we just cut. So I got the threader ready, as you can see. I'm just doing some slight pressure to start the threads. Some manual, rigid. Pressure. Once it gets going, it'll bite in by itself. So you want to make sure you give it plenty of oil, or you'll wear your your threads out really bad. Too much oil is just probably not even enough oil. So just every couple times you go around, you give it some oil. to buy the pan and oiler instead of doing it by hand. Can't afford a um, automated threader. It costs a lot of money. Maybe about four grand. And you gotta buy threads and everything. And you can get one of these kits off like eBay or something for probably about 400 bucks. I got one with a hard case. And I can do up to two inch pipe. So right about there is where I want it. Where the end of the threads meet the end of the pipe. I need some good engagement. Go, you don't want to go too far because then you kind of ruin the pitch of the of the threads. This will gauge good. Never had a problem with it. I'm going to back this threader out. Just reverse the knob and I'll start to reverse. And I'm going to jump over that spot where it's ending the die. clean thread. That's a good thread to me. Nice and crisp. Looks really good. Take this piece of pipe out. Get some of the oil drain out. And clean this place up a little bit. So we did get our pipe in there. Now we're just going to go upstairs to see. 
if it's aligned, we'll uh, swing it over a little bit. It should be. Let's hope. I hate cutting these things, getting so precise. It's a bit dark in here. But you can see that's pretty good. Just have to swing it over just a touch to the left. Be right on center. That's real good. So there you have the finished product. Inside this radiator being connected between this and this. Also going up to the second floor. It's now individually connected. Um, as you can see in the basement. The only thing that's not on the video is adding this little piece of pipe here. This valve. Uh, and that's it. So... Sorry I didn't record that, just the way it is, but at least you get to see the finished product and now it's um, independent and there's no gurgling, no uh, bubbling, no overflow of water. Runs really nice and smooth. Um, thanks for watching.